Greetings. This video shows the process for forward and inverse kinematics on a 3R serial manipulator. Let me draw the 3R serial manipulator. So I'll put it in the XY plane. Y. Uh, the 3R manipulator has three joints, whereas the 2R only had two joints. And so now we'll have three joint angles, theta 1, theta 2, and theta 3. So here then is the location of the end effector. And <coughs> the orientation angle of the end effector is gamma. Again, the, the angles, the joint angles, we have theta 1 and their relatives, so the angle between one length and the subsequent length, theta 2, and here's theta 3. And then the link lengths are A1, 2, A2, 3, and A3, 4. Here's the 3R manipulator. We have 1, 2, 3 revolute joints. And the robot parameters, the link lengths, A12, A23, and A34, plus uh, uh, the joint angles, theta1, theta2, and theta3, those provide the location, xy, and orientation, gamma, of the end effector. So that's the forward problem. And this is uh, really just an extension of the forward kinematics problem for the 2R manipulator. So the position x is given by a12 times c1, again that's cosine of theta1 in our notation, plus a23 times c1 plus 2, so that's cosine of theta1 plus theta2, and a34 times cosine, oops, times C1 plus 2 plus 3. And y is the same equation but substituting sine for cosine. And then gamma is the sum of the three joint angles. So just to sort of go over again this notation S1 plus 2 plus 3. Just to make sure uh, you understand this, be sure that you agree that um, sine of gamma is equal to S1 plus 2 plus 3. It's the same exact thing. Sine of theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3. That's what we mean by this notation. So there is the forward kinematics problem. We're given the joint angles and the robot parameters, the link links, and we find the x, y, and gamma coordinates. So now we have the inverse problem. So for inverse, we're given uh, x, y, and gamma, and we want to find um, theta 1, theta 2, and theta 3. And you're also given the link links. So here's the 3R robot. And this inverse kinematics problem is, is uh, no harder than the 2R problem. Because all we do is we um, find the location of this, of joint 2, or I'm sorry, of joint 3, and then we treat that as a 2R manipulator. So let me um, 
just draw this over a little bit larger. So there's our robot, and we're given x, y, and gamma, so we know where this point is. What we'll do is find the location of this point first. That's the first step, and we'll call that P3 for the position of joint 3. Okay, so there's our notation. Um, so the steps for the inverse kinematics problem for this 3R manipulator. Step 1, find P3. That's a vector, so I'll draw that bar over it. And using uh, trigonometry, this is a really simple equation. So x3 is equal to x minus a3, 4 times cosine of gamma. So um, here's that triangle when we're talking about trig. This isn't quite to scale from what we have there, but anyway, there's gamma, and this is A, 3, 4, and here is P, and here is P3. So X3 is equal to this X coordinate minus uh, this length here, the length of this side, and that's A, 3, 4 times cosine of gamma. And then so y3 is just y minus a3, 4, sine of gamma. So <clears throat> now we know the position of this point. So what that looks like is So there's P3, and this is our theta 2, theta 1, A1, 2, and A2, 3. And so now this is a 2R inverse kinematics problem. Oops. So this is a 2R inverse kinematics problem. And so if we know how to solve the 2R inverse problem, then we can get theta 1 and theta 2 because here we're given the coordinates of this point, we're given these link lengths, and that is the inverse kinematics problem for the 2R manipulator. So once we have P3, then that immediately leads to the 2R inverse problem. So that gives us theta 1 A and B and theta 2 A and B. And then to find theta 3, well let me show you the, the A and B scenarios. So say I've drawn um, Say I've drawn uh, theta 1a and theta 2a. Wow. Not too good with this pen. Oh, man. So there's, that's supposed to be, um, here, this is theta 1b, and this is theta 2b. Okay, and then so that will give us a different value for theta 3. So here's the link a23, so this would be theta 3b. So to solve for now theta 1, 
a and b and theta 2, I'm sorry, theta 3 a and b, we would use this equation that the definition of gamma, gamma is theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3. So we just get that theta 3a is gamma minus theta 1a minus theta 2a. And then the value for theta 3 that corresponds to the b case for theta 1 and theta 2, we'll call it theta 3b, is gamma minus theta 1b minus theta 2b. So that's how we get um, theta 1a, theta 2a, and theta 3a, and then also theta 1b, theta 2b, and theta 3b. So that's the solution for the 3R inverse kinematics problem.